So as you can see here, for our model, it's gonna be a this is gonna be a y axis, this is gonna be the z axis, and this is gonna be a x axis. We're gonna consider all the axis in the calculation to get the value of the stress at each a b c d points. Okay, there are four points, and then our p is located here, and our p is 80 kilonewton. Our p is located 55 millimeter from the centroid and 30 millimeter from the x axis. Okay, so let's go for the first part. Assalamualaikum and I am Zafri Benzaki. Uh, I will present about the two principles acting on this model, which is the which are principle of transmissibility and principle of superposition. First of all, I will uh, explain about principle of transmissibility, which is force couple system. For load P, which is 80 kN, that acting which is centric with respect to the center line of the vertical member when the in order to transfer the load p we can apply the force couple system for at the vertical bar that have the effect of the eccentric load same as the load p that which is a concentric for now uh, this load acting through the center of gravity of the member next i will explain about the principle of superposition First principle of superposition, we can see that uh, point A, B, C, and D at, at this model, the normal stress at, uh, for, for this point, for this point A, B, and C, and D, which is the compression stress, uh, then the bending stress at axis X for point A and B is tension stress. And for C, point C and D is a compression stress. Next, which is the bending stress at axis Z. For point A and D is a compression stress. Then the at point B and C, which is the tension stress. So that's all. Okay, now we are going to proceed with the calculation based on the free body diagram that we have been drawn before. So, as we know, when we do the cut section, there will be load that will resist the load applied. For this case, there will be axial load and also the moment. So, we are going to apply equilibrium equation to find the axial load and also the moment. So, for the axial load, we are going to use summation of Fy positive upward is equal to 0. So, P minus 80 kN is equal to 0. And we will get P, which is the axial load, is equal to 80 kN. And for the moment Z, we are going to use summation moment positive anti-clockwise is equal to 0. Moment Z minus 80 times with 55 is equal to 0. And we will get moment about the Z as this is 4,400 kilonewton millimeter. And we will do the same for the X as this, which is summation moment anti-clockwise positive is equal to 0. Moment X plus 80 times with 30 is equal to 0 and we will get moment about the X axis is equal to negative 2400 kilonewton millimeter. Okay, now we are going to compute all the normal stresses due to axial load and the bending moment. As we know for the axial stress, we are going to use the formula force over area which is 80,000 divided by 0 0.12 times with 0 0.08 equals to 8.33 MPa. And for the normal stress due to bending moment about the Z axis, we are going to use formula MC over I, which is 4,400 times with 0 0.06 divided by 1 over 12 times 0 0.08 times 0 0.12 power of 3. And we will get the normal stress due to the bending moment about the Z axis is 22.92 MPa. And we are going to use the same formula for the normal stresses due to the bending moment at the X axis, which is MC over I. So, negative 2400 times with 0 0.04 divided by 1 over 12 times 0 0.12 times with 0 0.08 power of 3. And we will get negative 18.75 MPa. 
for the last part, I'm going to explain how to get the resultant stress at location A, B, C and D. As you can see, we calculate using positive and negative sign from the direction of the sigma at free body diagram. At location A, you can see why negative sigma 1 minus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 and it is because sigma 1, 2, 3 is a compressive stress. For for the resultant stress at A, we calculate by negative 8.33 minus 22.92 minus negative 18.75 and the result at A is negative 12.5 MPA. The resultant at A is a compressive stress because it is a negative. For stress B, you can see why negative sigma 1 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 and it is because sigma 1 and sigma 3 is a compressive stress while sigma 2 is a tension stress. For the resultant stress at B, we calculate by negative 8.33 plus 22.92 minus negative 18.75 and we will get 33.34 MPA. The resultant at B is a tension stress because it is a positive. At location C, we are going to do the same way with part A and B. Uh, we calculate with negative sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 and it is because sigma 1 is a compressive stress while sigma 2 and 3 is a tension stress. For the resultant stress at C, we calculate by negative 8.33 plus 22.92 plus negative 18.75 and the result at C is negative 4.60 MPA. The resultant at C is is a compressive stress because it is a negative. For stress at location D, as you can see, negative sigma 1 minus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 and it is because sigma 1 and 2 is a compressive stress while sigma 3 is a tension stress. For the resultant stress at D, we calculate by negative 8.33 minus 22.92 plus negative 18.75 and we will get negative 50 MPA. The resultant at location D is a compressive stress because it is a negative.